I was talking about Paul's prayers, if you're catching up <laughs> on the recording. Um, and uh, I'm just going to read a few of the slightly smaller ones. Um, I think just as I read some of these, think about the word all, it appears a lot. Um, and basically there's two things really that I want to bring up. One is that um, we could pray these prayers for other people. Um, Paul was just a man uh, carried along by the Holy Spirit. And also we could pray these prayers for ourselves or these prayers could become a reality in our own life. So as I read every prayer, think about that. So may the God of hope, you'll all know this one, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with the hope with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, it, it's just abundant, isn't it? As, as we read them, uh, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, not just a little bit. Um, and it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not just kind of that you'll feel okay. It's, this is God enabling you to be joyful, to be peaceful, to trust him um, and overflow with hope. Uh, next one. This is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Again, it's just this, it's, it's abundant. Um, that we'll be able to discern what's best, that we'll be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, that we'll be filled with the fruit of righteousness. And it's all for the glory and praise of God. And this next one, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful. And he will do it. And this is a thing about any time we pray, isn't it? Um, it's not about us. It's not about how we pray. It's not about what we pray. It's about who we pray to. Um, and I think that's how Paul is able to pray these things, because he knows who he's praying to. Um, again, here, look, that your whole spirit, soul and body may be kept blameless. I think we'd look at ourselves and think that's impossible. But through God, that's possible. Um, a uh, short one. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. And these weren't just nice little things that he was writing in his letters. He was actually praying these prayers for the people that he was writing to. Um, there's other bits in Acts where he talks about um, uh, constantly praying for them and, and being in tears in, in prayer. Uh, and I was kind of thinking... I'll leave that on just for people to take a note. I was thinking, you know, when was the last time I was in tears about anyone who was praying? Um, you know, not that we're to be constantly blubbing, but it's just that sort of depth of prayer. You know, we're not just, oh, Lord, you know, when we look at Lord Jesus, please help this person get better. Amen. We're not praying like that anymore, are we? We're praying, you know, kind of real prayers that will help people. Um, if you do pray, then that's fine, because God will hear it and he'll answer it as well anyway. Um, but it's easy, I think, just to kind of, um, I suppose, mundane, pray in a mundane way. But let's, let's take an example from Paul and um, allow him to kind of encourage us into this kind of prayer. Um, so just a few general points. I may have made them already. So they, these prayers were for real people. Um, he was writing to actual churches. Uh, I guess as well, they were for each church, they were for, for a church, a body of, of believers, not particularly for one person. Um, so again, as we read them, you know, we can think of our church. God, is this true? Um, may it be true. And it was specific. He knew each church that he was writing to. Um, again, as I said, you could probably look at it and go and work out kind of how he's praying because of what we know about each church. Um, interestingly, most of these prayers, I think, sort of seem to come from the, the good churches, or the better churches that he was a bit more happy with, um, rather than some of the, uh, not naughty churches, but yeah, those Corinthians had a lot of problems. He, he seems to 
pray um, for more and more for these churches that he knows are doing well. Um, I'm going to get very distracted now. I still <laughs> grasp from it. Um, also, they're Paul praying that they're God's desires for these people. They're God's desires for the churches. Um, they've made it into the Bible. I'm sure he prayed loads of other prayers that aren't actually in the Bible for these same people. Um, but God has made sure that these prayers Paul, are in the Bible. Um, and they were from God's heart for these people, through Paul, uh, but they were God's heart. Um, so because they're in the Bible, they're for our benefit. Um, and I think we can look at them and go, this can be true for me. Um, uh, not all, they're not at all half-hearted, are they? Any of these, those prayers we've read are the ones, you know, he's, he's not praying. Uh, I suppose I better pray for that lot in Thessalonica. Um, you know, he's, he's going for it. It's God's heart coming out. Um, and he's expecting that they will be answered. He's expecting fulfillment. He's not just praying nice things because he wants them to think, oh, that's nice that Paul wants this for us. He's praying them to God because he wants God to actually answer these things. And he knows that God can answer them. Um, and that these things can be fulfilled in their lives. Um, so again, there's sort of two main points really that I want to draw out this whole morning is that we can pray like this for other people. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever prayed some of these kinds of prayers for other people, but I should be for, for you, for us. Um, just as on, a, on the aside, these were all prayers for believers, but we should be praying for unbelievers, the same kind of prayer, um, in the same kind of passion, you know. Um, you know, do we get on our knees and seek God for people that are around us that are lost? I know we, we do pray, but I know for myself, I can I can do it in a certain way, you know, but I need to go far deeper. I need to get hold of God and, and cry out to him. Um, and, and the other thing, that these prayers can be fulfilled in us as well. Paul prayed them because they were possible. Uh, to be answered in the people who was praying them for, but they're also possible for us, which is a, a massive encouragement. Um, so we'll go back to some of the, the specific prayers. I'll, I'll draw out a little bit from them. Um, so it's one of the quite big prayers, um, so they're on a few slides, but I'll just read through it and then I'll pop back. Uh, so for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm, realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. That is a lot of power. Uh, that is for us who believe. It's towards us who believe. Um, so. As I was saying, you know, these the Ephesians, I guess Paul is, is happy about what he's heard about them. He's heard that they love all the saints. Um, and that's kind of why he's able to pray these kind of like more and more and more kind of prayers. Because they're already um, well, and he's just praying for more and more. Um, and I don't think when he says like, I'm, I'm always praying, I don't think he's praying every single second of the day. Um, but it, he, he really is praying for his people. Um, you know, we often say to people, oh, I'm praying for you, you know, and it's easy to say that, uh, but we've got to make sure that we do, you know, we do pray for one another, and we can pray this kind of prayer. Isn't that great? Better, better than just kind of um, help them, you know. Um, again, sometimes, as Graham was saying, sometimes you just haven't got a clue what should I pray. Help them might be the best you've got, and, and God will hear that, and he'll hear, because the verse that Graham was saying was that spirit prays prayers that can't be uttered. Um, 
in groanings, you know. So God hears the things that aren't wonderful words coming out of our mouth. He hears our heart as well. So don't feel like, oh dear, I'm going and I'm praying, saying wonderful words. I'm just trying to encourage us that, you know, let's look higher. Let's pray for um, all these kind of things. Um, and again, you know, the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you may know the hope. And he's talking, you know, he's not just, he's not really knowing these things. Um, to which he's called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Um, I'll go to the next one. Um, also to Ephesians again. So um, I can't remember what this for this reason was. So you're going to have to do your own homework. Um, for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And if we're in any doubt that God answers this kind of thing, now to him who is able to do immeasurably, abundantly more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Um, and again, you'll notice a lot of them is it's all about God being glorified in us, in his church. Um, it's not so that someone can either look at us and go, oh, what a wonderful prayer that chap prayed you know this should be in the, in the secret place it's that god would be glorified in his people um i'll just back in a bit. um and again it's it's who he's praying to you know so often we'll see in his prayers i kneel before the father from whom his whole family in heaven derives its name and i pray out of his glorious riches that he'll do these things he is he's almighty he's he's able to do anything um, we sang, didn't we, that our shame was deeper than the sea, but his love goes deeper still. And I was just thinking, you know, however much trouble we're in, God is bigger than all of it. And he can help us easily. Um, he's, he's doing all kinds of things in us, but he's able to just, with a word, just change. Let me strengthen you by the power of his spirit in your inner being. That's, that's what we need, isn't it, in so many circumstances. And that Christ himself may dwell in our hearts. Um, that's what we need. That's what this world needs, is that Christ is living in us. Um, the world needs these prayers to be answered in us so that we can show them Christ in, in his fullness. Um, I feel like I didn't read this bit, but this bit at the end, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God whoa you know we read that and we read it oh lovely prayer but that that you may be filled with all the fullness of god because god wants to live in us he's he's not giving us half measures he's not going oh, i'll give you a little bit he wants to fully come in and live in us and be himself in us and through us and that is why it's incredible um, and again just that that's a, a great encouragement isn't it any time we're kind of doubting, we just need to look to God and think, he is able to do this. Um, right, next one to Colossians. Uh, for this reason, he's talked about um, Epaphras, another chap who's been there, coming back and reporting again that they have great love. Um, and so then that's why Paul is giving thanks. He says, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. 
again, it's just over and above, isn't it? Um, to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understandings. Um, Graham Klein was talking about wisdom, wasn't he? That we need wisdom. Um, and God wants to give us that, and he's able to. All spiritual wisdom. There's so many such situations where we're in and just haven't got a clue what the best thing to do is. Having a kid is a case in point. But you've got to just throw yourself on God and ask him for wisdom. And he, he gives it. He gives it. Um, and again, he's praying this, that they may live lives worthy of the Lord. Um, and we were saying in our hand, it was, I, I used to read that and think um, it's kind of like worthy of God in the way that, say, um, maybe people would look at me and judge my dad you know, if I live in a certain way. Or, so I've got to live in a way that's worthy of my father's name. But it's living a, a life that is worthy of the kind of life that he lived. Um, that we can live that kind of life that would have been worthy of Jesus living. That, that's amazing. Um, I just think, as we read these prayers, you think, wow, 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 wow. Um, and we can pray we can pray for ourselves, um, and they can be fulfilled. Um, so, yeah, are we praying like this? I don't think I am. I know I've got a long way to go. Um, not, you know, not that we kind of sit down and we read them exact words or we kind of judge ourselves because we're not praying for Paul, but just that we pray these kind of faithful, expectant prayers where we, we look at God and we go, and, and often it's, it's, sort of, it's through the knowledge of God, it's through knowing God, knowing who he is. That's how we can pray these things because we, it's, it's easy to believe that he's so good when we uh, uh, if we don't know him as well, you can sort of doubts can creep in. But when we know him, these things can can well up and, and faith can rise. Um, do we pray for one another? And how much do we pray for each other? This kind of prayer, you know, we we pray when we're sick, uh, when you know someone brings their, an issue with their child, or this or that. Are we really praying for each other? These kind of prayers. Um, I've I've been um, not convicted, but well, I suppose, yeah, convicted to pray like this for, for all of you and, and for my wife, you know, for, for my brother, my physical brothers and sisters. Um, we can pray like this. Um, you know, let's, let's be extravagant in our prayers for each other, for our church. Um, God, and as Les was saying, you know, God wants us to come to him with our helplessness. Um, there's nothing we can do to kind of make these prayers happen. It's, it's only God that does it. But we've got to come to him and, and lay hold of him. Um, there is, there's just so much in all these prayers, isn't there? You're going to have to go back and look at them yourselves. Um, but it, it's truth. It's, it's God's word. It's all true. Um, and it can be a reality, as I, as I keep saying. But you know, do we doubt it? Do we read those and go, hmm? Yeah, not sure. Or do we go, maybe for that one and that one, but not for me? Uh, we shouldn't doubt it. Let me read um, another passage. It's also from Ephesians. Um, it's Ephesians 2, from verse 1. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of work so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God was rich in mercy. He loved us with great love. 
do we do we believe that? Do we do we receive that? That God loves us. Um, and again, this is it says uh, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. We're to be people that show forth what Jesus can do in, in the light. Um, and th this again, you know, that God has raised us up with Jesus, seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's present and continuous as we're hearing. That is, can be true now, is true now. Um, so, of course, these things, these things can be possible. Um, Are we aware of God's rich and lavish mercy for us? Do we hear that and think, again, you know, I'm not sure about myself. God wants to lavish his, his goodness on us. Um, are we living in the good of it? God's done it. It's available. Um, he wants us to live in the good of all that he's done for us. Are we praying these kind of things for ourselves? Are we expecting that God can do them? that he can make them a reality in our lives? Do we desire it? You know, often I think we're quite passive, aren't we? Um, I know I am myself. Um, it's easy to get caught up with just the things of life. We get busy. Um, but we're to come. Um, again, Les was saying, you know, we, we can think, oh, well, God, God will do it. God's sovereign. God wants to do these things. But we've got to come. He, he kind of wants to know that we want it, that we desire it. He's able to do it. In an instant, um, but we've got to come. I, I, want, them. I want them now. Um, I'm dissatisfied that I'm not experiencing this kind of thing um, or more of that in my life. I want that to be true in my life. And I know I need to get on my knees, I need to lay hold of God and ask Him for these kind of things. Um, and it's all for His glory. It's not just for nice feelings or that we might look good, it's for God's glory, in us and in the church. Uh, there's just a, a couple more of um, Paul's prayers I want to look at. Um, as I said, there's probably more context uh, to all these prayers that we could look into, you could dig down and, and get more out of them. Um, but just as a general exhortation, I just want to read these, there's a few more. Um, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's definitely a prayer I want to pray for us um, as a body, that we have unity, um, and that we have one heart, one mouth. You hear it, don't you, sometimes in a meeting, like when God is really moving us. And this one prays and that one prays and you just you hear God speaking um, we want we want that every time that we meet we gather we want that even when we meet each other for coffee um, or tea whatever um, and again that we may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ um, another one Thessalonians may the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. And one of the um, passages earlier, I think it was Colossians 1, I can't remember. He's, he's commending them because they love all the saints. Um, we were saying in our, in our home group, you know, it's, it's easy to love this one and that one and few and not love that one so much. God wants us to love everyone and to increase and overflow with love for each other. Um, I was thinking about Ivy and uh, another one coming, just how it kind of just draws out love from you. Um, uh, you don't realise it, it can grow and it just keeps growing. <laughs> um, you know, she develops, she starts talking, little things like that. Wow, you come and think, I love this little thing. Um, and that kind of, we need that kind of love for each other. We'd do anything for each other. Um, Let's, let's ask God for it, for ourselves, for, for all of us, so that God can be glorified through it, that, so that people can know that we are his. Um, again, I'm sorry, I can't remember what this in mind was about, but I, I, I do, do um, commend you to do your homework. 
go read the prayers of Paul and um, have a look at them and really um, get hold of them. But with this in mind, we constantly pray for you that God may count you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may fulfill every good purpose of yours and every act prompted by your faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I really like this one. Um, that by his power, he may fulfill every good purpose of yours. Um, you know, oft, often we have, there's that phrase in there about good intentions. Um, often we have good intentions, but when, they're, um, when they come from God, good, every good purpose, God can by his power help us to fulfill them. Uh, and every act prompted by our faith. Uh, and that can be small things. I know it's so easy for us in churches to look at particular ones who do the more noticeable things. Um, to look at Les Wilden. Uh, just, you know, Les. Les is great. We're blessed to have him. We love him. But each one of you is just as valuable in the body. And every act, it might be tidying the chairs. It might be bringing someone a cup of water. It might be particularly praying for sick people. It might be phoning someone up. It might be anything. It might be praying. Um, every act prompted by your faith that God will fulfill them by his power. That's just wonderful. That's what we want, isn't it? Again, that he would be glorified. Um, I think this is the last one. Uh, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement, good hope, Encourage your heart and strengthen you in every good deed and word. God can encourage us. You know, if, are we feeling discouraged? God can encourage us. Uh, are we feeling weak? God can strengthen us with the strength that he, the power that he raised Christ with. That's there. That's what it says. It's true, you know. Yes, it's incredible, but it's true. Um are we feeling hopeless? God can give us his hope. The God of hope can give us, fill us to overflowing with hope. I think it's often in these times when we're feeling uh, just completely overwhelmed that God can really show us the truth of these things. Um, but when we're not feeling overwhelmed, he wants us to, to be in that place as well, to depend on him, to rely on him, to not suddenly think, oh, I'm doing okay. You're not, no, none of us are ever doing okay. We need him, we need more of him. Um, so I, I can't really do each prayer justice. Stop that. Uh, but hopefully it's just a bit of a flavor. These are what Paul was praying. Um, I, want, I do want us to go away and read uh, ourselves and just really kind of think, ask ourselves, is this true in my life? Am I experiencing this? Is this true in our church? Um, am I praying this kind of thing? Do we believe that these things can be true? Um, it's only as we kind of get alone really, really with the word that, that God can come alongside us and just minister his truth to us. Uh, but let's stir ourselves up, not in the wrong way, like Graham was saying, you know, you can kind of agitate yourself up, but let's, Stir ourselves up in the right way in prayer by the Holy Spirit to pray these kind of things and pray full of faith. We're praying to God. It's him who answers these things. It's not based on us who are praying. You know, don't think, oh, well, if, if Les prayed this prayer, it would be answered. No. If you pray it through the Spirit with faith, it will be answered. Um, let's do that. Let's, let's pray for each other. Let's pray for our church. Let's stir ourselves to pray for the lost, that they would come in and know these things as well. That's what we want for people, isn't it? But if we're not quite there, we, we're not, um, we, we kind of see less of a reason for others to know it. But when we know Christ and we know these things are true in our hearts, we want other people to know. Them. So let's devote ourselves to prayer, to Powerful prayers that are based on knowing God and having faith in Jesus. Great. Well, let me pray uh, to close and then I'll hand back to Graham.
Lord Jesus, we just love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you have put Paul's prayers for these different churches in the Bible so that we can read them and be encouraged by them, be exhorted by them, be challenged by them. Lord, I am convicted that I don't pray like this enough. Lord, I want to pray full of faith that you want to answer these kind of prayers. Lord, help us all to just learn more about prayer, to know you more, Lord, to stir ourselves to come aside into your presence so that you can stir us up by your spirit to pray life-changing prayers, to pray prayers that you are longing to see answered. Lord, we, we just thank you that all these things come from you. Lord, and we pray that these things would be true in us, that they would all be for your glory. Lord, in us, in our lives, in our church, in this town, in this land, Lord, that you would be glorified and that people would come into the truth and people would come and they would know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Graham. I'll just hand back to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.